Hello, everyone. Welcome to Get Connected with Julie Barkas and Michael Tassner. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you had a lovely holiday weekend. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Michael, but it feels like it's Monday morning. <laughs> ah, it definitely does. I, I, my wife was texting me this morning, and I'm, I'm just lagging on, on a few of these things and trying to trying to get to get things rolling. So. I know that's true. And it, it's such a balance right now, especially with quarantine, like your home life and your personal life, people are working from home. So it's like, you know, how do you, you balance everything? And I know I've been working from home for a very long time. <laughs> so it's kind of like you're, you're used to the routine, but man, what if you're new and you're not used to like just being at home? I wonder how everybody's adjusting to the routine or have adjusted to it. Yeah, I'd hope. Uh, I know some people are getting a lot more laundry done and catching up on all the Netflix <laughs> laundry. shows. And, <laughs> um, I was laundry. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think a lot of people are getting, getting some extra chores done around the house, but I don't know. I think as, as long as you can balance it, I mean, I think there's some people that, I mean, I think everyone's stir crazy, but I think there's some people that, that enjoy working from home and uh, like the 10 second commute from the bedroom <laughs> to their office. But to your point, uh, I definitely think that it encourages people to just be working constantly that, that's i guess what yeah. the challenge is when your office is like right over there it's like well i'm just gonna go work for an hour and then all of a sudden it's six o'clock or something like i know that. we know how that goes right definitely, definitely. <laughs> and then our spouses are, or our partners are yelling at us like hey yeah. wait a second i thought you were going down for 15 minutes <laughs> definitely, definitely. an hour yeah. later <laughs> especially with the weather getting nice it's it's a get this is when it gets really hard in my opinion to work from home so oh. it's a lot easier when it's like um, I know that you get cold weather in the winter and uh, we do here in Buffalo as well. So it's like when it's negative 20 outside, it's like, you don't really need to tell me twice to work from home, but when it's 90 degrees and you got a pool in the backyard or Woo! whatever, I, I mean, it's, it's tough to just stay on the computer, but. Well, that's when you got to make sure you got a portable office in place, right? Exactly. <laughs> Go outside and move it out there. I'm not good at that though. It's like, I just want to lay in the sun or <laughs> just enjoy that. But you know, there are experts right now who are saying that happiness among workers and productivity is going like is skyrocketing because people are so grateful to have an extra couple of hours at home. And I know in our childcare programs, it's a little different. Can't necessarily do all of the work at home. Sure. But I think there are some different tasks that we could be thinking about. Well, what is it that we could be knocking out right now? And I know our topic is going to lead us into um, talking about some of those things that we can be doing right now from home. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I, I know when we were brainstorming and uh, we were putting out some feelers and some questions to some of the people and, and just said, hey, what what topics do you want help with? And one of the topics kind of it, it was a few different topics in one. And it was around having conversations with parents that are bringing their kids back. Um, and then there were a lot of kind of questions that kind of went into that of, I mean, what do I do if someone doesn't want to come back? What if they then leave a negative review? How do I handle that? Yeah. And so we decided to, to kind of have our episode today really be around generating reviews. So what, what kind of systems and processes and protocols can you put in place? And then from there, we wanted to talk about, I mean, how do you deal with I mean, challenging reviews, how do you deal with difficult parents? And I, I do think that there's going to be a lot of that the coming months and um, just to, with the nature of everything going on, but also just the nature of childcare in general. I mean, when you're, I mean, taking care of, I mean, often, I mean, kids and or infants rather, I mean, as young as a couple of months old, I mean, their parents are going to be stressed and nervous in general. So yes. um, that's kind of the topic that we thought would be beneficial to all of you this morning. And uh, as always, if you have questions, please feel free to send them. I'm kind of monitoring them on here. So if you have questions around generating reviews or even uh, some examples of some wins or some disasters on the other side of, I mean, what, what's happened. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of make this interactive, but we'll make sure as always that we deliver lots of really great content. Yeah. And, and dealing with difficult people has always been like in the mainstream of conversation, you know, in all of my work with the childcare industry. And it's, it's something that's not going to go away. So we have to understand difficult people and why are they writing negative reviews? Um, and what can we do to proactively prevent it? And I think that's really, to me, that's a really important piece. It's not like waiting until trouble hits. And then what do you do with it? It's proactively preventing it in the first place. And there's different things that you can do to prevent um, you know, these kind of things from happening, I wholeheartedly believe. 
No, I, I completely agree. So do we want to talk first about, I mean, how do you generate the reviews or do we want to go the other angle that you just were suggesting of and how do you actually prevent the negative stuff from, from happening or how do you deal with it? Let's let, let's talk about the generating reviews. Perfect. You know, and I know that's something that you know you love talking about. So let's let's talk about you know generating reviews and how we can do that, um, and if there's any easy ways. And uh, I'd be interested in your take on that. And of course, we've got several things that we recommend to our clients. Sure. But then I think it's going to be okay. Great. Well, we get reviews. We get good ones. Those are fun, right? When we say our five star reviews, or we see people like raving about us, that's fun. But then when we have that one disgruntled employee who leaves or a parent and it's like well wait a second where did that come from then it's like oh what do we do yeah that's actually i i forgot about the employee angle and that's actually <laughs> from yeah. what we're seeing we're actually seeing more negative reviews from the staff uh, than we are from parents so yeah. usually it's uh, because they're often not always the case but often they're younger and kind of a little bit inexperienced and uh, if they get um, let go or thrown to the curb, so to speak, uh, they're usually not too thrilled. So that's a that's a good angle. So, so I think it would be really valuable to everybody who's watching this to really give them some good strategies on generating those rave reviews. You know, how do you capture those? How do you make people your raving fans and, and get some good reviews? And yeah, there's going to be the difficult piece of ugh, what do we do with those? But I really want everybody to leave and you know, if you have homework from today, it's going to be go out and get some good reviews because it's easy to do. Perfect. And I think part of it comes in the asking. You got to ask for reviews. Yeah. So let me let me throw some ideas as to kind of how we've we've been doing it uh, with okay. the centers that we work with, and then uh, I'd love to hear your insights, and uh, we'll kind of come out with something that's hopefully amazing for all these centers to go and take action on. So awesome. Um, all right. So a, a couple things first. So the first thing is I always recommend having a software tool to help. So there are a lot of tools. I know Julie, the one that you've worked with. Uh, is a tool called Sotellus. Mm -hmm. um, we've made our own tool. So we kind of built a proprietary tool that we use with our centers, but there's another oh, nice. tool called BirdEye. I mean, there's a lot of tools out there to generate reviews. So the first thing is I really would like you to be using software. So as we kind of talk through this, it's a lot less kind of work on your side and the software really just kind of helps automate a lot of the stuff. So that to me is always step one is pick a tool, there's again, lots of them. I know there's a lot of, excuse me, a lot of centers that use Sotellus. There's a lot of centers that are using our tool. There's lots of centers using other tools. So um, the tool is, it is just that, as long as you execute the tool well, I mean, any tool is going to to help you and, and move you in the right direction. Yeah, and, and you want to use a tool that's going to kind of like solve the mystery for you because you could go like, okay, I got a good review. I got it on video or somebody submitted it, you know, paper. Now what do I do? So when you get that good tool in place, like Michael's talking about with his or Sotellus, whoever you decide to go with, it automates it so that hopefully it distributes it and gets it out there so people are actually seeing the review. Because a good review is good, but if it's not going anywhere... What good does it do? No, exactly, exactly, yeah. right on. Um, so once you're gonna have the tool, from there, what I encourage you to look at is, when was the last time that you've really asked? So the mm -hmm. this kind of step two, after you have the tool, is really gonna be different based on the center. So if this is something that you've been asking on a regular basis and you're generating reviews on a regular basis, I'll give you a few more kind of nuggets as to how you can kind of improve that and keep it going. Uh, but the chances are pretty high that you have gotten some reviews, but it, there really hasn't been a formal process. So I'd love you to kind of formalize that process of, are you going to be asking once a week, once a month? Normally, uh, we encourage you to, A, kind of put the ask out um, a, a couple of times over the course of a week or two, if you haven't asked for at least a few months. And then from there, what I encourage you to do then is put this in place where families are kind of coming in and then there's a cutoff period where the software tool automatically is going to send a request. And we can talk through that in just a second of what do you say in their request? Can you incentivize them? And, and how does all that stuff work? Um, but I want you to initially kind of put some content together where you're basically asking for those reviews because the chances are pretty high that you haven't really formally asked, or it, if you're asking, it's a little kind of poster that's in the corner of your center that's in like an eight point font 
on, <laughs> on a white sheet of paper that you just printed and slapped there that just says, like us on Facebook, leave a review or something like that, for example. So you really right. haven't, you haven't formally like said, hey, I mean, it, if you've had a, a good experience, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so you want to look at what does that look like initially for you? And from there, it's just kind of continuing to build a little, little bit of momentum. Now, with that first ask, what I encourage you to do, and this is what's going to kind of keep you in compliance, because this is where some centers can get themselves in trouble, is the sign or the way that they're asking will say something like, if you leave us a five-star review, we're going to give you $100 off your next month, or we're going to give you a $10 Starbucks card or something like that. You actually can't legally, I mean, legally, I guess, in, in terms of like the terms of service to Google, for yeah. example, or Facebook, is you cannot say, give me a five-star review and I'll give you this. Bribes, or, right? Yeah, and exactly. Because it's like, you know, you're, gonna, you're, you're giving them, you're paying them to get, say something nice. Exactly. And that's not the perception that you want out there anyways. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like you to do is when you're putting this ask out there, you could word it something along the lines of, um, we would appreciate your honest feedback. Um, we've had the privilege of serving your family and I'm just spitballing the language here. So obviously you'd wanna massage the language to your, to your own words in your center. Um, but something along the lines of, of that, we have had the privilege of serving you. Uh, would you be so kind to leave us a review? Um, and as a gesture of good faith, we're gonna put your name into a drawing. So once a month or once a week, you're going to draw for a winner. Mm -hmm. And what I would encourage you to do is just do something a little bit different, um, different than just the standard Starbucks gift cards or Amazon gift cards, or, I mean, just be a little bit different. Maybe it's, I mean, something fun for the kids, or I mean, you can kind of think outside the box on, on the prize. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's not going to be for everyone. You're gonna draw X number of winners just as a small thank you. And then you're going to have the link to your software tool. And here's where things kind of get a little bit interesting. So with the different software tools, you're allowed to basically say where you ideally would like the reviews on. So I know for some centers, often Yelp tends to be the place that they have the lowest ratings. Mm. Like it just Yelp tends to attract complainers. Often the, is the case, not always the case, but when I've analyzed reviews for centers and I'm looking at Yahoo and Google, Yelp, Facebook, Bing, the Better Business Bureau, Care.com, all those different sites. Um, Yelp tends to have the lowest ratings. And we won't go on a tangent and talk about my feelings on Yelp, but I've had a lot of a lot of fun conversations with child care centers about is Yelp really an ethical site? And I mean that, yeah. that can be debated. But um, and did you hear did you hear the one story about the restaurant who was telling customers to leave like one star reviews on Yelp? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that was a riot. I think that was brilliant too, because it's making them stand out. So when people go to Yelp and they're reading all these one star reviews, it's like, well, wait a second. And it's like, yeah, my steak was not overly big so that I could feed three people. You know, whatever it was. <laughs> I mean, they asked them to leave like ridiculous comments. But I, I think that was just a really great way to have a lot of fun with the review process and be not taking it you know so crazy seriously no and definitely no. to leave one star reviews yeah that, that was definitely right. definitely an interesting take for sure <laughs> you definitely um, i don't know if i would do that in the child care space but in the restaurant space i think it uh I, i'd be nervous to see what they would say if like a one star review well you you only let my kid walk across the highway twice instead of three times like that who knows what they the kind or, of crazy yeah review. or you gave my child too many hugs today Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so they would, be, they would be those kind of reviews, like you give my child too many hugs today, or your arms are so big, you can't possibly, you know, whatever <laughs> it might be. So it's kind of like those kind of like sarcastic, where they're really good compliments. That's an they're interesting really good compliments, but it's like, yeah, you know, I don't know, I can't leave you higher than a one because, <laughs> yeah. That, that's definitely an interesting take for Yelp in particular. <laughs> I like that. I like that idea. Uh, so with the tool, you can actually direct them as to where you would like the reviews to be left. And what I like to do with that is, I mean, direct them to where your families are most reading the reviews. And um, often that's going, I mean, traditionally it's going to be Google and Facebook, but if you want to show a little bit of love to Yelp and maybe you've got a two out of five because only one family left you a two-star review. And later in our talk, we're going to talk about how to deal with those and respond and all that good stuff. But 
I like to look at where do you want to prop up some of your potential lower reviews because you'd be surprised that unfortunately a lot of times the negative reviews are going to be what make or break the decision. Um, so it, it's Google called it the zero moment of truth. I kind of called it marketing in the moment because what ends up happening is when a family is either potentially looking for a center or they're, they schedule the tour with you and they're getting ready to take their tour or after they took the tour, they're going to go to Google at some point and they're going to do a bit more research. Now, usually they're doing the research on the front end, but if they're then kind of waffling, they're going to start to go through and they're going to read your reviews. They're going to read them on Google, on Facebook, on Yelp. And sadly, they tend to be drawn more towards the negative reviews. So you might only have one negative review out of 50 and that's just going to grab something in their mind where they're going to latch onto it because it's going to then have them second guess the decision. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know about you, but even when I'm searching for products or looking at different things and I'm like, all right, what are the reviews? And if it's like, you know, 762, four and a half stars, I'm like, okay, well, where's that one star sure. so I'll go and read those reviews so that I can see, well, well, what is the issue that's being talked about here? so that I could understand it. So I, I purposely search, search out the negative reviews. And for me, it's not so much even, well, what was the review? It's how is the person responding to the review? And exactly. that's, probably, that's probably something, but I think that is so incredibly important. So, and, and I know this is something probably jumping ahead a little bit, but it's like, if you get reviews, you've got to be responding to those and how you respond to those reviews is so incredibly important. To me, that's more important than the review itself. No, I couldn't agree with you more, couldn't yeah. agree with you more. Um, so you can you direct the people where you're aiming to have those reviews and you're just going to kick it out of the software tool and you can load in family, I mean, emails and cell phone numbers. A lot of the tools will send not only an email, but also a text message. Hey, would you be so kind to leave us a review? Here's the link to do so. And again, when they click the tool, it, it can give them an option to as to where they'd like to leave the review. Uh, or you can direct it to say, yeah, for this week, I'd love some uh some good help on Yelp. So when you send out that email, it's really going to direct everyone to Yelp. Um, then maybe next week you want to prop up your Google and then your Facebook. So there's a lot of, I guess, strategy behind it. Mm -hmm. But once you kind of go through that initial blast from there, you just want to make sure that you have a process in place that you're executing often. So usually I say once a month, but again, it depends on the cycle of your childcare, how many families you have. I mean, if you're enrolling year round, it's much easier to be sending out an email once a month. Now, you don't want to be sending an email to the same people every time. So, I mean, it does take a little bit of work where you're kind of scrubbing the names on the list a little bit so that you're not, I mean, hitting up XYZ family, I mean, five times. And they're like, I already reviewed you five times because right. then they're, it's usually going to go the other direction. Now you're going to get a negative review because right. it's like you're asking too much. So, you want to make sure that you're you're putting it out there, but you're asking the people that haven't given you a review. Now, the only exception to this is that if you, for whatever reason, want to prop up one of your other channels, you can ask someone and use some messaging that says, hey, I know that you left us a great review on Google. Uh, would you be so kind to take that review and also post it on Facebook? Uh, we'd be extremely appreciative and um, I'll make sure that you get an entry in the drawing for, for doing that as well. So an extra entry. So there are ways to do that, but you want to kind of ease into that a little bit. So you don't want to be kind of your ask initially shouldn't say, will you please leave us a review on these four places, ask for one of the places. And then after they get it posted, maybe a week or so later, you can go in and say, thank you so much. Um, I like to actually do this through video. So um, I, I'm a big fan of a tool called loom.com. I also use bombbomb.com. I know, Julie, you're a big fan of audio, so Voxer. Um, but I, I like to find other ways to just be a little bit more, I guess, personal than just sending an email. So uh, I kind of like wave at them. Hey, I mean, Smith family, thank you ever so much for the review. And you kind of read it. I'm so grateful. Uh, if you have five minutes, I'd love you to also uh, put this on Facebook. We get a lot of families like yours that uh, are looking on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and what you'll find is that as you just start to ask, you're going to play with the languaging a little bit and kind of see what's working, who's resonating with what, um, are, is there any pushback? And rarely is there pushback unless you're asking too many times. But to your earlier point, I mean, it really is just about 
asking. And a lot of people are, are worried more about the negative and they're mm -hmm. worried that, oh my gosh, what if someone says something not so great and we only get a four star and then our Google ranking drops or right. that they, they really get in their head and start to overthink the situation. Um, and then they just end up not doing anything. But I can tell you that these reviews, this social proof, especially in this space, they are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, uh, they're, they're absolutely worth their weight in gold. Yeah, and I think this is where it's important to, to be able to shift your mindset because the mindset's going to tell you, oh, well, wait a second, we're not doing a good enough job or we're not as big as the guy down the street or all these thoughts are going to come into your head. And then we're really going to shortchange people out of the opportunity of leaving us a fantastic review. Definitely. Yeah. And so I really encourage everybody to, to make that leap. And one strategy that I'm going to recommend is that you just really adapt the mindset of a toddler. You know, put yourself back into the place of a three or four year old or maybe even a little bit older. But how many times do they ask for what they want? They ask and then they ask again. And if you say no, then they come back and they ask a different way. And then, right, Michael? And then That's they ask a good again. Thought. But as adults, we tend to give up. We're like, okay, well, we asked once, they weren't interested. But it takes more than just asking once or putting it out there. Like Michael said, just like, oh, you know, it's on a piece of paper somewhere and they're not leaving us reviews. So they must not want to. You know, you've got to assume, jump to the mindset that says everybody wants to leave me an absolutely amazing review. You know, jump to that mindset and expect them because a lot of times when we're feeling negative, we ask for the reviews and then people are like, oh, parents had so much fun like giving us this reviews. So to me, remember, ask, adapt the mindset of, of a toddler, ask, 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 and um, expect the positive. And I think also in there too, Michael, I don't know about you, but I almost sometimes feel like we're shortchanging people out of the opportunity to rave. You know, it's kind of like when you find uh, a shirt or a pair of shoes that you absolutely love and you want to tell everybody about it. You know, this is us giving the parents opportunity to go out there and just rave about us, rave about where they're entrusting their little miracles to be raised at, you know, to be educated, to be inspired by, you know, and I think that's really important. And the other piece that, that I'm, I guess I'm, I'm thinking of it as you're talking is if you're aiming to attract more families, more dreamy families, like the ones that you have, they're going to want to leave those reviews for you yeah. because they're going to want their friends down the street to come to your center so that their kids can kind of grow up together. So um, if they're happy with you, I mean, they're, they're going to leave the reviews and it often is just, I mean, everyone is inherently busy. I mean, there's so much stuff going on. So to your point, I mean, it, it's, you can't just send out one email and say, well, we try to review campaign it didn't work didn't work because it's okay well if you would have sent something yesterday for example i mean it's not going to work on a holiday weekend and the first thing people do when they come back to to work the next day and they're looking at their emails usually they have one finger like i did this morning on the delete key and they're just uh <laughs> just getting rid of stuff so i mean it, timing is everything but it's also just making sure that you're asking on that reoccurring basis so if they're in especially the people that are not um, not responding or leaving a review. And that's where the text message can come in handy. So it's, if it's going to their spam box or whatever, I mean, text messages have a great open rate. Uh, if you're friends with some of these families on Facebook, you can send a nice note on Facebook right to their messenger. Uh, would you be so kind to leave a review? I mean, so there's, it, it, it needs to be built into your strategy because mm -hmm. again, it, as I said a few minutes ago, these reviews literally are worth their weight in gold. And they can be the different make difference makers of helping you generate more enrollments. And after you start to get these, um, a few things are going to happen. So with Google, for example, uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, connectedness between your number of reviews, the types of reviews and your search rankings and those Google map listings. So there's an inherent advantage to having lots of positive reviews on Google. Um, now, it's not always the case, but that definitely is one of the ranking factors is that Google is in the business of showing you businesses and web pages that make the most sense based on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a child care center, you're looking for a Montessori center, for example, and they have that Google three pack, as I call it. And if there's 10 Montessori centers that are within 10 miles of where they're searching, 
they're going to have to make some decisions of which ones do we want to show in the three pack. We can't show them all. So they're going to go through different factors. And one of those factors is definitely number of reviews and when was the most recent review. So you might have a 4.8 star rating on Google and 100 reviews, but you haven't had a positive review in three years, which I also see often because you don't build that into your habits. So you want to show because to Google, they're like, well, yeah, they've got a lot of great reviews, but I mean, has something changed? No one's left them a positive review in three years. What's going on here? Right. Um, so you want to make sure you have that process and that system so that you're getting new reviews a couple of times during the course of the year. Yeah. So you're keeping it fresh, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think our reviews, you know, are things that are living too. You know, it's that you can't say enough. Well, we had this really great review 10 years ago. Definitely. You know, it's, it's look at, and if you haven't looked at your reviews, you know, Google yourself and see what your reviews are right now. And I, I know that's a mindset shift in itself, but, but just go Google yourself and see what reviews come up. Oh, and, and from there, you also uh, want to make sure that you're monitoring, not just the main platforms, but go to page five on Google in page 10 and, and you're going to find that there are all these review sites that you had no clue you were even on. Mm. So everyone always thinks about Google, Facebook, for example. Well, even if you're not a member of the Better Business Bureau, they have a way for people to leave reviews. So you could have some positive or some negative reviews there. So that's why I keep going back to that software tool where you can load in 10, 15. I mean, we've got some centers that we're monitoring 30 platforms. And again, there's a couple that make the biggest impact. But what I don't want to have happen is that if someone goes on a, a wild goose chase of looking for more information about your center and they will go past page one of Google when they're kind of doing more in-depth research and then they find this random review site that has three one-star reviews and they may not even be legitimate. So that's the other great thing with the software tool and we can let me switch gears. I want to throw one more idea on what to do with the positive reviews, and then we can kind of switch gears to how do you deal with difficult families and negative reviews and how do you reply and all that good stuff. Um, you want to make sure that the, the reviews are actually legitimate because that often, I wouldn't say that nine times out of 10 by any means, but maybe two times out of 10, there are spam bots that are leaving negative reviews. There are families that didn't even enroll with your center. Right. There are staff members that, uh, according to the Google terms of service, they can't actually be reviewing you on Google. So um, you want to make sure that you're monitoring all those reviews because they're often, sadly, it is a lot of negative stuff out there that you're going to be like, I had no idea that I had the Better Business Bureau, I'm not even a member. And there's like all these one-star reviews and I don't recognize any of the families. Exactly. And that definitely could be the case. And that could be costing you enrollments, having that out there that you don't even know is there. Yeah. And you definitely still want to respond to those reviews, but also you can get reviews removed from Google if you find that it's not actually somebody who did business with you. I know we've had some clients who have had actually them removed and I'm not sure what the process is in, in, involved with those, but still respond and say, you know, I, I don't think you've been with us and don't think you're a client. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so one more thought on leveraging the positive reviews and let, let's talk through some languaging to respond and kind of how do you deal with difficult reviews and, and even difficult team members that leave kind of, I always like to call negative reviews love notes. Um, love. So how, how do they leave those, <laughs> those love notes to you? But um, that just kind of helps me laugh it off a little bit instead right. of uh, getting overly emotional about it. But uh, the other thing that I would highly encourage you to do, and you can't just assume you can do this, um, but after you're getting all these reviews on the different platforms, I would love you to then go to that family or that parent and say, hey, thank you ever so much. Uh, would you be okay if I posted this elsewhere? And uh, if you want to get all legalese, you can have them sign a document and all that. But I mean, for me, it's really just an email. Can we Can we use this? So I'd love you to be using this on your websites. I want you to be using this on your other social platforms or your cross posting reviews. I want you, I mean, you could have a, a one sheet of paper where you're handing it out during your tours and it's like 20 different positive reviews. So like, I want you to make sure that you're continuing to get some traction with those reviews. Not only are they online, but 
grab those reviews and kind of scream from the mountaintops, hey, these are all the families that love us. And I want to make sure that that you've seen it because when you're putting those families in, in the mindset that are taking tours and you could have them in your email autoresponders and you could have it in your monthly newsletter that you send out. Thank you to ABC family for their positive review. Here's the, re like it, you want to constantly be reinforcing that positivity because it shows the other families that they made the right choice. It shows your staff that they're making a difference and an impact and it just continues to, to build momentum. Yeah, I agree. You know, and one thing to think about, too, with your reviews is think about the objections that you get uh, when people come when it comes to enrolling. You know, is it, oh, you're too far of a drive or this or that? But you could easily have reviews that answer those objections. And then those are listed on your website. And I think that's a powerful strategy is to be and, and, and even just a mindset shift for yourself when you're thinking about, oh, we're not this or we're not that. You know, get some reviews that say, yeah, you know, you are amazing. Yeah, you are spectacular. You are so worth the drive. You are so worth the extra money. You know, you could get reviews that specifically use some of those language to meet the objections that you get during the enrollment process. No, that, that's a that's a really good point. And um, sometimes, dependent, uh, I will spoon feed some of that language for sure. Yeah, um, I'm sure that I've written some reviews for people and said, hey, here, I know that you're busy. Uh, I wrote this uh, based on what you've shared with me in the past, and I'd love you to massage it and uh, put it in your own words. But if you know people are inherently busy and there's I mean, a couple of people that you'd love some reviews from that, you know, could potentially carry some clout in the community, for example, right. uh, you got to make it easy on people. And I, I love that thought of, um, hey, I know that you drove. I mean, you drive 15 miles when the average person drives six miles. Uh, could you mention that? In, in the, that's a great idea. Yeah, I actually, haven't haven't thought of that one. So, or or the money, or multiple yeah. siblings, or whatever it is that you find is an objection, either in your own mind or in your clients' minds. Feed them some of that language so you get some of those reviews. I think love it. No, yeah. that that's uh, that, that's great. I like that a lot. Me too. <laughs> so, so let's switch gears then okay. and look at. I mean, how do you? I, I'd love to hear your process, and I, and I can kind of give you mine, but you're great. Uh, with wordsmithing and, and knowing the right way to reply on this stuff. I mean, our, so if someone leaves you a negative review, uh, there's obviously lots of different actions. And I mean, our suggestion, uh, which is similar to, to yours, is you want to make sure that you're replying. So we typically mm -hmm. say you want to be replying as close to real time as possible. And usually that first reply is a little bit generic in the sense of saying, um, hey, I, I just had a chance to read your, your comments. First off, I appreciate you leaving uh, the review. Um, I would like to look into this a little bit more uh, and I will get back to you by XYZ date. So we try and say, um, I mean, time is of the essence, so you wanna reply quickly, but I tend to encourage the centers to have kind of a, a, a draft or a template that they can use and then from there, they, they want to do a little bit of investigating. And mm -hmm. the investigating is, are they actually a family? Um, did they take a tour, not enroll? Is it a staff member? Is it a competitor? Which sadly happens more often than you would think. Um, I like to do a little bit of research um, rather than waiting to, to reply because it at least shows other people that you're responding in close to real time and you're going to look into it. Yeah. And, and and I love that strategy because, you know, in absence of communication, the mind always goes to the, to the negative, right? Exactly. So, if somebody, so if somebody leaves a review and then there's nothing there. Somebody's going to be like, oh, okay, maybe there's some truth to this. But if you use that generic response of Michael's suggestion, I think that's brilliant because then it's like, ah, okay, we have something there. And even a staff member can go in and plop that generic response in. And then you've got a little bit of time. Plus, you never, ever, ever, ever want to respond to those reviews from a, a negatively charged emotional place, meaning it's not a place for you to air the dirty laundry, so to speak, and you just say, yeah, but you did this and you never did this and you didn't do that. So, you know, that's really important is that you don't want to respond from a neg negatively emotionally charged place to those reviews. And I always, this is going to be a tough one, but I always <laughs> encourage the owners to not even have access. And the reason behind that, and I, I have been guilty of this in the past of not necessarily uh, responding to reviews, but responding to feedback in the moment. I can tell you that if I'm getting negative feedback that I don't agree with, 
um, in the moment, like on a phone conversation or something like right. that. I, I personally do not take it well. Um, <laughs> and I usually feel like I'm being attacked. And rather than saying, all right, I, I appreciate your feedback. We'll talk later today or tomorrow. If I start to reply in the moment, it usually does not go very well. Yeah. Um, so usually three to four sentences max. And then what you can do is after you've kind of given that generic reply and you've done your, I guess, investigation, then you can add a little bit more context. But to your point, it's not meant to be a gigantic, I mean, you didn't pay your bill on this date and we gave you a chance because what's going to end up happening is you're going to tick off that person yeah, and then they're going to go to another platform and then they're going to go to Reddit and then they're going to go to, yeah, like if you, they just want to be acknowledged that you're yeah. hearing them. Yes. And the key is, yes, you want to be responding in, in a non-confrontational tone, but the key is actually speed. Because if you do not, if you let it go a couple of days and it kind of stirs, uh, there's all this research online of, I mean, how fast do people expect that you're going to get back to their questions or their emails or their Facebook, like customer service stuff. But then there's also a lot of these around, I mean, how fast do they expect a response to kind of a concern? Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, they're not talking days. They're typically talking minutes or an hour or two. So that's why you need that system in place so that you can be monitoring this stuff. So if a review comes in, uh, you can have that autopiloted message even automatically post um, so that it goes out within a couple of minutes of the review coming in, for example. Um, and then again, from there, you want to be doing your investigation. And that, as you said, Julie, that's where, depending on the type of review, the situation, every situation is different. But surprisingly, most of the reviews that I'm seeing as of late are things that really don't belong on Google or Facebook. And what I mean by that is that they are an employee leaving it. Mm -hmm. So there is, when you're in the back end of Google My Business, you can flag a review. Um, and that typically starts the process then of um, allowing it to, to kind of start to do some research uh, and seeing, hey, is this actually legitimate? Um, you can definitely reply after you give that generic reply of, um, can you tell me a little bit more uh, about you? I don't happen to even see you as a family or even a family that we gave a tour to. And if they don't reply to that, I mean, it, it basically shows your case. And that again is another one that you could flag. So, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of work, but it really, it's, it's leveraging these software tools to manage it because you only get one reputation. And yeah. with a child, I mean, some of these centers, I mean, they've been around for 50 years and multi-generational and, I mean, 10 locations or five, I mean, it, it, even a small family center that's at your house. I mean, if you're relying on that as your livelihood and you don't want to have I mean, one negative review, for example, uh, I mean, could take you down, so to speak. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And so does your tool that you have, Michael, does it help people with all these different areas that you're talking about? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it does all that good stuff and, um, I don't even know if we even sell it as a one-off, usually give it away for free to our clients. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, there's a lot of great tools. Um, but for me, it, it's, it's making sure that you're monitoring everything. And that usually is one of the first steps is just be aware of this stuff. Yeah. And a lot of times you're kind of in a little bit of a dreamland of thinking that everyone is, is happy. And especially with everything going on, I mean, I can tell you, um, so my, my youngest daughter will be entering uh, childcare next year, uh, pre-K. Um, but uh, both of my daughters, including the three-year-old, well, she turns three in a couple of weeks, they're in dance class and they have been getting hammered on negative reviews due to their payment policies yeah. of, well, they've been closed for two months. And then they sent out an email a week or two ago of saying, uh, we need you to make one more payment. And most of the families were, and we can debate it all, all day long, but it, it comes down to how people are feeling. Uh, most of the families were like, I'm not sure why I'm paying another payment. And basically it was just saying, if you want to keep a spot with us next year, you're going to have to pay right. uh, now for the month of, of May, even though we're closed. And so it, it, 
I mean, they could have worded a little bit differently to basically say our business has gotten hammered. We can't afford to pay our bills. We hope you've, uh, can you continue to be loyal with us? And I mean, they could have worded a little bit differently, but unfortunately now it's taking its own life of people going on the mom groups on Facebook and there's negative Google reviews and Facebook reviews and, um, and they're not responding to most. And um, you just have to be really cautious of this stuff. And especially as you're reopening, if you close down or as you're bringing on more families, which most centers are starting to do, mm -hmm. you just really, you got to be monitoring this stuff and make sure that you're communicating in an open, honest, transparent way. Um, yeah. But you're always going to have some families that you just can't please. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that you have some some input on how you tackle those. And um, I mean, we tend to, to stop where we've, I guess, publicly tried to on, on social media or the review sites, you've at least acknowledged their review. And then you've kind of investigated and given a couple more replies of or a couple, couple more bullet points based on our conversation. Here's what we have done for you. Uh, again, appreciate your review. And then you kind of close out the topic. Um, and there's going to be some families that are demanding refunds or they're demanding different things. And I, I, you probably would say, well, those aren't your dreamy families. And <laughs> right. I, I, would, I would encourage uh, or, or say the same. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to be careful of who you're attracting in the first place. And I think that's a really critical thing to look at is what kind of families are we bringing in? Because we shouldn't be understanding what people's characters are when it comes to the review or when they're leaving. We should know and get to know our clients. I mean, this is our livelihood. These are our clients. Um, but the more that we put in positively into the relationship building or to, into attracting the right people, the less we're going to be dealing with the kind of people who are leaving these crazy reviews. Sure. Right? Because it's all about them having faith in us, them trusting us. And even if something happens and we've had situations where we built such positive um, relationships with parents, we've got negative things that transpire in a childcare program, an allegation, whatever it might be. But then everybody is now on the owner's side or on the director's side because they know you, they like you, you know, you've put in a little bit into building a relationship with them and they're going to default in your favor. And I think that's really important to be looking at as you're putting things on your calendar, reviewing reviews, whatever it might be, writing responses, you know, getting that fantastic software tool. Also schedule time to be building relationships with parents. And that that is a big thing for me. But also when you look at that, back up the formula a little bit and say, okay, well, what are we doing to make sure that we're attracting the right people? And to be looking at questions that you can be asking people before they enroll with you to determine just like you do during a job interview process if this person sitting in front of you is going to be one of your dreamy clients and that's really important too is understanding how to structure those questions so that you're attracting the right people because we all you know you're in business right you're you're running a child care program you want to be working with people who like uh, i feel good to be around not that they're this big energy suck. You want to watch out for people who drain your energy, but really work on attracting the people who are like, woo, bring more energy to you. No, that, that's that's a really great point that um, often I, I personally overlook it because it's just, I don't know, I, I tend to, I think that's where we compliment each other, but um, <laughs> I, I tend to just be more, I guess, just think about the business side. But that is the business side of making sure that you're asking those questions and you can look at all the families that are so uh, appreciative and have been, I mean, examples. I mean, I've got some centers that we're working with that, I mean, families have been uh, bringing their, their staff breakfast every day for the last two months. Yeah. I mean, those are the kind of families that you, you want, that they're so grateful that you're, staying there to support them, that they're thankful for you. I mean, it, it, to, to your point, and if you're really doing a good job of attracting and screening and making sure you're bringing in the right people, that as long as you're executing well, um, then they should be leaving you positive reviews and you shouldn't really have it. You shouldn't be having to deal with too much negativity. Right. Well. And, 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 you know, and I think about the basic of a never, uh, the basis of a negative review, and what comes to mind for me is that people will leave negative reviews when there's an absence of communication from you. 
So when they are a client and they're not getting regular communication from you, there's not a good relationship in place, they will be more inclined to go and just uh, you know, share the negative with whoever is willing to listen. Even the lady at the grocery store, it doesn't matter, but they're gonna make sure that the word gets out there because they wanna be heard and they wanna be recognized. And when they're in that mode of where they're like, something's not right, I've gotta leave a review, they're already in the sphere place and they are just responding based on fear. So the more you can eliminate fearful feelings from the start, so have really great communication with people, build relationships proactively, you are going to be eliminating the fear factor that causes people to leap into that negative review mode. Love it. Yeah. Now, what do you do on, you know, I was, was thinking of uh, one of the centers that we used to work with that, um, if you Google their name, uh, no. of which I won't reveal on this show, uh, their negative reviews come up. But the interesting thing is it, it's not their Google reviews or their Facebook reviews for their center. It's actually the team basically saying, this is a terrible place to work. Um, what are your thoughts on dealing with uh, negative reviews from staff? Um, and or um, encouraging the team to leave, I mean, positive reviews on uh, Indeed, for, for example, and, and looking at I mean, how you can uh, continue to not only treat the families uh, with that re review piece, but also to look at the team. Yeah. So what staff are you giving your staff an outlet to be heard? Or is it just a matter of putting out the fires every single day? So it's really looking at it proactively and saying, well, what modes of communication do we have in place to effectively resolve and solve and come up with solutions to issues? So not just venting about issues, because if we vent and we vent and we vent and we vent, people are going to be looking for more outlets to vent. So it's really about talking about being solution focused as a team and having a really good process in place where people can bring up the things that aren't going right and then also make recommendations for solutions and have those solutions be heard. And we've talked on several shows about the fortune is in the follow up. And it is so true, even when we're talking about relationship building, because we could have a staff member who has a little bit of a problem. Um, with something that's going on at the center or a coworker or whatever it might be. And there's no process in place where they can actually get resolution to that problem. And they come to you and they talk to you about it. And you're like, yeah, 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 okay, we'll get to that. And then it's like six or seven months later, it's like, oh, I forgot to deal with that problem. I forgot to circle back to that. And then that's where people are going to be like, well, I'm writing a review or I've even seen this happen too, where it's like, they don't write the review, but because they're venting to their best friend or their mom or whoever it might be, that parent or that friend will come and write a review. And maybe it's on that staff member's behalf. Yeah. That might be one of those mysterious reviews that appears. It's like, oh, who is this person? But they're listening to somebody on occasion that sure. is you know, feeling negative about what's going on. So to me, it's all about communication and proactive relationship building. Yeah, I think that that's that's a great point to keep in mind that if you're not giving your staff an outlet and they feel that they don't have an outlet, then they're going to wind up on Indeed.com. And um, I, when I was scanning some of the the center's reviews, it, it'll say, well, are they currently employed there, current employee or past employee, for example? And I mean, it, you'll start to see, I mean, a lot of these are former, but even a lot of them are current employees. So if you start to look at, if you've got your team leaving one-star reviews on Indeed and they're a current employee, well then look at the trickle effect of how that's going to negatively affect uh, the relationships with the parents and your engagement. So um, the only other thing to keep in mind, and it, it doesn't go against what we just said, but, um, and I, I am in no, no way an attorney, but, you also want to have some kind of policy around this of um, it, you I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this, I mean, just, just a policy of, I mean, what, what do you expect of, of the team? And even if it's just something on the lines of, we'd like you to vent to us if there's a problem um, we are, are not in alignment. If you're going to go and vent via social media or leave us review, I mean, there's different ways to kind of, um, phrase this and obviously you can yeah. consult with an attorney but uh, I, I do think to your point it's if you give them an outlet if they don't feel they have an outlet they are going to go to 
social media and just say, and even if it's not truthful, they're going to, I mean, say, I mean, just one of these reviews says, love the families and the coworkers. Um, director is hardly there. doesn't care unless you're a favorite of hers. Um, feel bad. They get stuck in the management whirlwind and yeah. of like these, these reviews can be I mean, detrimental. Um, yeah. You know, and it's about um, when it comes with your team, you know, you're saying start right, right from the start, you know, tell them what your policies are, have some good language in there that talks about the process of reviews, but you've got to make sure that you're backing it up. So if you say, well, come to me, let's resolve the issue. You know, a lot of times we say that it's even in the NAEYC ethical code of conduct, right? If you have a problem with somebody, you go and talk to that person first about the issue to give them the chance to resolve it. But a lot of times it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen for several reasons that we could get into eventually, maybe on a different show, but it doesn't happen where a lot of people aren't resolving these conflicts. So you've got to make sure that you have in place processes and systems to support your staff in getting conflicts resolved. You know, and I've been in situations, Michael, where it's like a situation hasn't been resolved for like five or six years and we get the two teachers in a room together. And the next thing that happens is one's throwing chairs at the other one because it's like crazy. They just have this, you know, outpouring of emotion and this explosion that comes from them holding it in for so long. Um, so we have to really clearly define the tools that we have in place to help our people resolve conflicts. And if you don't have some tools in place, these are really important ones to put in place and have language in place in your employment agreements and in your enrollment agreements that state, this is how we handle problems. This is how we, you know, resolve issues if there is one. And we appreciate you coming to us first before you just go and write a review about it. We really want the opportunity and we see your feedback as the opportunity for us to grow. And that's how we have to be looking at this. So in the review that Michael shared about the director not being there, caught up in the management stuff, you know, look at that as the opportunity for grow and say, oh, gosh, this feedback is such a gift. Now, how do we take this feedback and use it so that we can make changes going forward that will really serve our clients and serve our staff? And that's really an important mindset shift to make is that, Feedback and reviews are a gift. And you're going to learn something from the reviews, even the untrue ones, in terms of how you can do things differently or how you can respond to them. Love it. Yeah. So Tracy asked a question, which will we'll answer this. And then I'd love to do kind of a quick recap before okay. we close out. Uh, as always, it seems like an hour flies by. I know. Uh, so Tracy's question is, is it a good idea? I'll put it up here. Um, Show. Tracy, it, hello, Tracy. Uh, is it a good idea to encourage staff to leave reviews on social media? Um, so I'd love to hear your take, and I'll, I'll give you my take it as well. Yeah, I, you know, I say absolutely. I, I, I really do. I say tell them to leave reviews, leave reviews on your page, video record them leaving reviews, whatever it might be, talking about different things. And you know, I, I think one thing that all of our our leaders can be doing differently out there is, is really talking about the great things that are going on in your program. Use Facebook right now as your platform, you know, whether it's even on your personal page, but use it as your platform to spread the positive about what's going on, what you're doing, what you're working on. I do encourage staff to leave positive reviews and to leave raves, but you've got to make sure that your team is in the place where they will do that. So in other words, if you know that you have a gossipy, drama-ridden, negative, blame-placing type of culture going on, that is not the time to say, hey, everybody, go online and leave reviews. No, what you want to do is really make a transformation happen. So you know that your vision is alive, your team is feeling positive, they're engaged with you, then that's a good time, right? That's the time. Couldn't have said it any better myself. So um, same way, I would I would definitely encourage your team to do so. But to Julie's point, timing is everything. So like I wouldn't be asking them right now because it just there's so much stuff going on, and I mean people are just in this strange place. But if your staff is in a great place, then you surely could. But if people are just getting off unemployment and kind of coming back, and there's just a lot of change. I wouldn't want it to backfire on you. Yeah. That's all. Um, but if you know that your your team, I mean, loves everything that's going on, and uh, I mean, loves you, then then it's a different story. 
Yeah, you know, and you explain to people, and anytime I ask for a review, whether it's a video testimonial after I'm done giving a keynote, you know, because I'll, I'm one, I just whip out the video camera on my phone these days, it's so easy. We don't even have to carry a flip video camera around anymore. But I'm like, oh, you know, because they'll come up to me and say, oh my goodness, that was so good, that was so great. I'm like, oh, well, what did you like about that? I'm like, oh, you know, your feedback is golden to me and it really helps me um, show others how I can help them. Can I capture that through a video? And we'll get the video. but. To me, when it comes to staff, think about a regular review process, an internal one, a feedback form, whatever it might be, where you're getting regular reviews from your staff anyways. And then once you know that your culture is to a certain place, then you can be like, oh, okay, now let's get these out there to the world. But you could also start the process, and, and this is, I think, brilliant for your marketing, is have your staff really reflect on things they love about you. Say, you know what, I'm gonna make a list as long as I possibly can of what you love about working here or working for me. And you make this long list, you take pictures of it, you post that on Facebook, you post it on LinkedIn, wherever it is, and then you let your team know, I wanna know what you love because I wanna be able to expand on it. I wanna be able to do more of it. And it doesn't mean that we do everything our staff wants us to do. That's not the idea at all. But you really want to start getting the feedback in some shape or form so that, yes, then it can go to Google and then it can get out there in a bigger way. But start by really having an internal feedback process with your staff and then also feed it a little bit and say, OK, I'm going to make a list of what you love about us so I could do more and see what your people say. Love it. So let's do uh, a quick homework assignment. Um, okay. So, Ooh, so I like we talked um, about so much. <laughs> definitely. So I mean, I'll, I guess I'll give you a couple, but I mean, to me, the first one is um, pick a software tool to kind of help you with this process, because otherwise, in my opinion, you'll you'll get to be a little bit overwhelmed. So these tools are meant to make the process easy. So that that I think would be homework assignment number one. And then number two, it, it would be nailing down a process of asking the frequency, the messaging and all that good stuff. Because once you start to gain that momentum, um, it'll get to be a lot easier for you. So those would be my my two homework assignments. Obviously, you want to re-listen to this episode. There were lots of good nuggets <laughs> and things like that. But uh, those would be my, my big two. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what that was going to be mine was make a decision. You know, make a decision as to when uh, you can ask people for reviews. Put it in your calendar because what gets calendared typically gets done. What's not in your calendar is going to be like, oh, man, we should have done that like six months ago. But the process of getting reviews can be an ongoing process where you're always getting it. But put it in your calendar to do something, whether it's a, a testimonial contest or a rave review contest, whatever it's going to be to do some kind of raffle drawing. Um, to do it and make the decision. So I'm going to keep it as simple as that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, so do we have a quote for today? I know you've got your, your quote book usually handy. So no. And what I've got in front of me is our childcare business success book. And what I did is uh, in this book where we share all different success stories and people who have really triumphed over a lot of tragedy in the childcare industry. Uh, meaning they've had floods come through their building or they've had other kind of crazy things happening and they were able to make it through. So at the beginning of every chapter, I'm trying to find the beginning of a chapter now, is a quote. Uh, let me go to the back, one of the back ones here. All right. I could tell I didn't mark my pages. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go from chapter 10 where it all comes back to your people since we were talking about that. So you don't build a business, you build people, and then the people build the business. And that's Love by it. Zig Ziglar. So where can, I know you've got a lot of really fun things going on. You've got, I mean, shirts and hoodies and, and beautiful gear. Oh. <laughs> and we can have my hoodie. Where can people kind of go to, to learn a little bit more about you? And sure. where would you like to direct them? Yeah, so if you want any of the gear that we have, which I think is absolutely Cool, always essential. Don't know if I can get in the camera. That's yeah, that's great. Azalea Pinks. Uh, you can go to happychildcareteam.com. Go get some always essential gear. Great for team photos, all that kind of stuff. Um, but also, if you really want to focus in on your vision, your mindset, your people, and your processes, I have a free masterclass for you that you can go to childcarebusinesssuccess.com. And I talk about the drive method 
which is a way that I've been teaching my clients for over 20 years to accelerate their childcare business success. So they feel, you know, dreamy about their lives personally and professionally. Uh, but you can go there, sign up for the free masterclass, take it, and also come and join us in our childcare business success group if you're not a part of that. So Love yeah, the drive method, powerful stuff. Childcare.com. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. How about you, Michael? Uh, so mine is just local childcaremarketing.com. So and we are a digital agency, a revenue growth generation agency for child care centers. So it's local childcaremarketing.com. Um, we would schedule an enrollment acceleration session. Um, so as always, I mean, thank you ever so much for tuning in. Thank you. Um, thank hope you. you all had a great weekend. We we know we appreciate the time that we get to spend with you all and hanging out. And uh, make sure you share it, like us, comment, all that great stuff. Um, and we will continue to be back for you on Thursday at 9 Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. Sounds great. Woo. So have a, a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, everyone, and to you, Julie, as well. And thank you. Uh, we'll catch you back here on Thursday. We'll see you everybody on Thursday. Bye. Bye.